This has to be one of the craziest stories that I have come across on Twitter. So we have to get right into it. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw this tweet from the Twitter handle at JW Governing Body. And they posted this article of this man setting kingdom halls on fire. And I was in shock. So if you click the link and I will provide it in the description, I am going to read this article to you guys. So this article was posted on Saturday, October 19, 2024, and the title is Serial Arsonist Sentenced to Prison for Attacks on Kingdom Halls in Thurston County. The man who admitted to torching and shooting at Kingdom Halls of Jehovah's Witnesses in 2018 will spend 11 years in federal prison, a judge ruled Friday afternoon. Mikey Diamond Starrett, 52, of Olympia, apologized during his sentencing hearing in the U.S. District Court in Tacoma while acknowledging the impact his actions had on the Jehovah's Witness community. Quote, I am embarrassed and ashamed of my actions, Starrett said. The attacks are indeed unprovoked and unacceptable. I wish I could go back in time and take it all back. Here is a video of what that looked like. Earlier this year, Starrett pleaded guilty to four counts of damage to religious property and one count of use of a firearm during a crime of violence. Prosecutors called Starrett a serial arsonist who hated the Jehovah's Witness community and spent months carrying out the attacks. These were not crimes against buildings, but a series of attacks against a community and a faith. Assistant United States Attorney Jonas Lerman wrote in a sentencing memorandum. He committed not just one attack, but four. The damage or destruction he caused terrorized the Jehovah's Witness community and threatened our nation's promise of religious liberty. The motive for the attacks remains unclear, though investigators noted that Starrett was vocal about his animosity towards the Jehovah's Witnesses. He described the Jehovah's Witnesses as sleazy and as gangsters who were uninterested in serving the community. Lerman's sentencing memo states, Starrett said Jehovah's Witnesses were trying to take over the world and wanted to do something about it. He said that he wished they were all dead. Federal investigators executed search warrants on Starrett's internet history and found he had researched Kingdom Hall locations around western Washington. Starrett's internet history also revealed the depth of his hostility towards Jehovah's Witnesses and Christianity more broadly. The sentencing memo states, For example, Starrett conducted extensive searches for re relevant information in the period before and after the attacks, including the phrases, Jehovah's Witness refused military service, J.W. Elder sexually assaulting eight girls over four decades, and how to destroy Christianity with one easy step video. At Friday's hearing, Starrett said he is a changed man and feels no hatred towards the Jehovah's Witnesses. I was wrong. I regret what I did. What I did was un-American, and in the United States, religious freedom is protected by the Constitution, he said. Starrett said he was drinking heavily in 2018 and experiencing a midlife crisis. Although I took great care to avoid physically hurting anybody, I had no right to destroy and damage Jehovah's Witness kingdom halls and offer my sincere remorse for the fear and danger that my actions created, he said. Starrett's attorney, Brian Hirschman, argued in court that Starrett had a viable defense and couldn't, could have won the case had it gone to trial. We had a lot to work with. We did. And I commend Mikey for saying, no, I've got to take accountability for what I did and walk away from that staunch defense and take responsibility, Hirschman told KOMO News. Prosecutors asked Judge David Estudillo to impose a sentence of 14 years while Hirschman asked for a sentence of seven years and one day. After a brief court recess, Estodillo imposed a 132-month sentence, 11 years, followed by three years of supervised release. This is just behavior and conduct 
that is just so serious that the law requires a serious punishment, as Dudillo said. That happening in the United States is what's crazy to me because, like he said in that article, that it is un-American to do that, that in America we do believe in religious freedom and that's something that we know as Americans. You know what I'm saying? Like it's something that is respected. It's something that we don't, we don't want to go too far because of the First Amendment, which is why I always say that we need to declassify the Jehovah's Witnesses as a religion before we do anything else because they are hiding behind the First Amendment of freedom of religion to practice their faith, to continue to exist in America when everybody else, especially in the XW community, is trying to take them down. Another shocking point is that he carried out these attacks not once, not twice, but four times. And then the motive behind it, which is something that I can totally understand. I am not condoning the violence. I'm not condoning these un-American ways of protesting our grievances towards this cult. I am also saying that I understand where this man is coming from. I, uh, I understood what happened in Germany and in India and anywhere else where people felt like they had to take justice in their own hands. The justice system can be slow. Or they never receive justice. Once you wake up, once you find out the truth about the truth and you realize how all of it is either a lie or false or wrong or that this is a cult that is damaging people's lives and destroying families and how bad the shunning policy is or how Jehovah's Witnesses take pride in their members, especially children who refuse blood transfusions and they essentially become a martyr for the Jehovah's Witnesses. To any normal person on the outside, I can understand how that can become so angering and so upsetting that you would it would push you over the edge. And sometimes if you don't stop and think, you can find yourself in the same shoes as this man. And it's 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 sad because we should have a better system in going after cults that are abusive and it should be almost a no-brainer you know what i mean like to go after these people that have committed these crimes like i see in the comments all the time the bigger issue of everything that we're dealing with among the jehovah's witnesses is not only that it's a sin it's a crime and that's what gets people upset is when all of these crimes go unpunished when all of these crimes continue to happen within this religious community and it continues to be swept under the rug because of the internal affairs. The elders take care of it, the legal department takes care of it, and they will fight tooth and nail with every donation given to them from average Jehovah's Witnesses and they will fight it in court. So it's understandable that this man probably knew that, probably did his research, probably knew that the only way to get Jehovah's Witnesses was either the long game which most of us activists are playing we're playing the long game or the short way and taking it in your own hands and possibly committing a crime and going to jail for it which is why most people wouldn't do that we don't want to break the law we don't want to commit crimes because that would make us no better than the jehovah's witnesses it would make us no better than them if we stoop down to that level and commit crimes ourselves how is that going to help the movement? How is that going to help us as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses trying to push the, the message, trying to educate people, and through that education, take it a step further? Through legislation, through the right means, can we change the law or declassify them as a religion? Or we can do something that is more powerful than taking it into our own hands. And that's why sometimes I really do believe in, you know, letting, you know, praying to God and letting God direct us in our activism because the truth will always come out. You know, the truth will always come out. There's only so much that the governing body can do or say or hide that will not be revealed to us sooner or later. And it's up to us to continue to be vocal about it. The way that this man was going about his frustrations and going about his grievances, either to Christianity or specifically to Jehovah's Witnesses, is not going to move the needle. It's not going to convince people. It's not 
going to do anything but distract people from the real message of what we are trying to send about Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's only going to cause more fear. It's going to create more fear among the same people that we want to try to wake up that they are in a cult. It would only affirm their idea that they are being persecuted because of their faith. They think that what these apostates are doing or that these people on the outside are doing are either misrepresenting them or um, spreading misinformation, and that's why they shun us. So that's why we try to do our utmost to share the truth and to share facts. So that there is nothing that they can deny or say when it is presented to them. That's when the cognitive dissonance will come up in their mind. And they will either have to make a decision whether they want to accept the truth and the fact of what's going on. Or if they want to continue taking the blue pill and accepting the lie. They won't be able to make that type of a decision in the way that we want them to, right? We want them to take the truth. But they won't be able to do it when they are still believing that people hate them or, you know, that people are spreading lies about them and affirming their religious persecution complex. So that's why this doesn't work. And that's why I am shocked that this happened, um, especially in the United States. And so this is why we do what we do. So I feel really bad for this man, you know, despite the crimes that he has committed. I, I feel sorry for people who don't release the frustrations in the right way. You know what I mean? Like there's so many appropriate ways to protest and to um, advocate for Jehovah's Witnesses to make change or for them to be dissolved entirely. But it's going to take a, a long time. You know what I mean? And we are just normal people. And so sometimes we need to stop and think and pray, honestly. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah.